Hey guys, welcome to Shop Talk Live. Uh, glad you guys could make it. Thanks for showing up tonight. Uh, before we get started, if somebody could give me an audio check just to make sure that uh, the wireless mics are working okay and that we don't have too much background noise. Uh, I did shut the air conditioner off, but I have to have a fan in here. Uh, so if somebody could real quick give me an audio check, I would really appreciate that. <clears throat> what we're going to be talking about today is uh, gravity-fed uh, water systems for your cages. I've got one unit here that I have not installed uh, the water system on yet, so I thought you know, it'd be a good opportunity to go ahead and get that done and show you guys uh, the different types of water systems that I use and the different type of you know, drinkers that I use. Uh, let's see. Audio check is good. Thank you, Tiffany. Appreciate it. Uh, Henriette's in the house. Thanks, Henriette. Appreciate it. Okay, so great. Um, before we get started, I had a guy contact me probably about two weeks ago, and he wanted to be a channel uh, supporter um, over on the Caternix Corner Live show. But I told him, I said, you know, we already have um, a couple people. You know, we have a manufacturer, and we also have a breeder that kind of helps support the channel. Um, but what I did was I took the guy's information, I kind of checked him out a little bit, make sure that, you know, his store was legit and everything. And he seems like a pretty straight up guy. We, we spent probably a good, you know, 30 minutes on the phone last night talking. And uh, so he's going to donate some stuff from his, he's got a poultry supply store out west. I think they're in Washington State. And uh, he's going to donate some stuff to give away here on the show. So I just want to show you guys real quick what we're going to be giving away tonight. Um, it is a starter pack. Uh, you're going to get 25 um, 12-count uh, plastic quail egg cartons, the, the regular quail egg cartons. Uh, you're also going to get 25 custom-made labels uh, to go with them cartons. So if you're, you know, if you're selling eggs, whatever. And he's also going to throw in five pairs of scissors, uh, you know, to give away with the eggs or whatever. So I thought that was really nice of him. So if you guys could use that um, or would like that, uh, please comment um, uh, starter pack in the, because that, that's what it's called, the starter pack. Please comment starter pack in the, uh, in the um, chat room there, and uh, we'll put you guys in the running for getting that. Uh, if this goes over well, um, he said that uh, he's willing to donate, you know, stuff every week for the Shop Talk Live series, so I thought that was pretty nice of him, but... He also said uh, he wanted to send me some stuff to do uh, reviews on. So maybe in, in the Shop Talk Live series, we can review some of the equipment that he deals with and, uh, you know, see how that goes too. So anyhow, let's get back to the uh, project at hand. Um, basically, um, this water system is a gravity-fed water system that uses a five-gallon bucket as a reservoir. It usually sits up on top of the cage and then drains down... Uh, some PVC pipe uh, on the side of the cage and it uh, feeds all these uh, legs that have the, the drinkers installed in them. So, but what I want to do is I wanted to uh, talk about the two different types of systems that I use. They're both gravity fed systems. One is a DIY system and the other one is a commercially made system and that is by uh, hatching time well i don't need to change cameras that but anyhow they have these rails that come with their cages uh, it's already got the t fittings on them it's got uh some vertical nipples in them now i don't use the vertical nipples i actually uh change this out i take this t out i turn it sideways and then i install the horizontal nipples in them but you could install the horizontal nipples in it you could install the uh, little drinker cups uh you know whatever you prefer and the thing i like about it is to connect the whole system, you use this uh, black uh, PVC vinyl um, tubing, and uh, it works really well. I've got a container over here. I should have put it, but they got a five-gallon water container also that sits right up on top, and you know you hook this thing to it and then feed all your lines. So that's one of the systems that I use, obviously on my hatching time cages, but I I may incorporate it into some of my other cages should I need to swap out, um, you know, the water systems that's in them. Uh, the system that we're going to be building today is uh, the basic gravity-fed water system. Um, it is a manual water system, meaning you have to fill the, uh, you need to fill the bucket up, you know, every so often, like 
about every three days is where I'm filling mine up. But you could actually um, buy a toilet fill valve and set it up the exact same way we're going to do today. But you can mount this toilet fill valve inside the bucket by drilling a hole through the bottom of the bucket and running a uh, water supply line to the bottom of this fill valve. That would, keep, that would make it a truly automatic system. Um, all you would have to do is just monitor it, you know, make sure it doesn't get dirty and, you know, keep it clean, whatever you have. But uh, it would automatically fill up for you and your birds would have water, you know, at all times. So what we're going to do first, I want to go over um, some of the materials uh, that I use when building these uh, systems. And then uh, we'll briefly go over uh, how to, you know, cut and assemble everything and install it in the cage. So now I'm going to change your cameras on you. Um, first off, uh, you'll need to decide what type of uh, waters you want to use or drinkers. Um, you can use these red plastic uh, drinker cups, which a lot of people use. I still use them in some of my grow out cages. Or you could use these vertical nipples. I don't know how well you can see those. I'm trying to get away from these because they have a tendency to leak. So I don't use them as much. Um, what I'm converting all my cages to now are these horizontal nipples uh, but they get, they've got a little plunger here the thing I like about them is on the back and I know you won't be able to see it but it, it's got a little o-ring that when it closes it seats and you know blocks all the water off so you don't have any issues with water leaking okay so those are the the, the water cups you'll have to decide on which ones you want to use on that um, other than that uh, for this system you, obviously you're going to need a uh, 10 foot stick of uh, half inch PVC pipe, a half inch, um, what do they call this thing, a compression coupling. And that is basically so you can disconnect your bucket from the system and uh, you know clean the bucket out without having to tear the whole system apart. Uh, you'll need some T's. Uh, depending on how many cages you're feeding uh, will determine how many T's you need. You're going to need at least one uh, 90 or an elbow. And then these things are really nice for the uh, attaching your cups to. Um, and they're all basically the same side. It's a T with a uh, quarter inch threaded uh, nipple on it. And all the uh, fittings, your, your water cups and your uh, um, nipples, the horizontal and the vertical, all fit that thread. So uh, they're pretty cheap. I, I can't find them locally, but they are available on uh, on Amazon. I can't remember what I paid for that bag. I think this bag was like maybe eight dollars, something like that. It wasn't very much. Um, also, you'll need this is to uh, tap the bucket, so you've got a, a drain on, or an outlet on your bucket to hook to. Uh, what you'll need is a half inch male adapter and a half inch female adapter. Um, this this white piece here you, you can get over in the the same part of the store where you get all your PVC like at Home Depot or Lowe's but this piece um, you actually have to get over in the elect, um, electronics department or the uh, electrical department over by the uh, um, conduit and the reason you have to use this is if you use the regular uh, half inch adapter uh, from the PVC, it won't thread all the way down. You'll have, you'll have a gap about like that. But if you get this one, it will actually thread up and meet nice and tight right here so you get a good seal on your bucket. Um, I use uh, some hose washers. I think these are a dollar. Um, I use those. Uh, zip ties. Obviously you'll need some PVC glue. These are really handy. They are PVC cutters. I love them. And then your, your standard uh, Home Depot bucket. And I'm going to show you real quick on how to uh, go ahead and drill that bucket out. Uh, but before we do that, because I want to get some of this stuff out of my way, um, these are the pieces that I cut for um, the legs that come off of your main feed line going into each cage. You'll have to determine you know, how long you want them. Um, these I made a little bit shorter because of the way I'm mounting them in the cage. I'm not mounting them horizontally along the back of the cage. I'm mounting them uh, front to back along the um, one, the right side of the cage. And I'll show you why I did that 
uh, as soon as we get over to the cage. But basically, uh, you'll need a couple of these end caps also, um, depending on how many you need. So put your end caps together, and I'm not going to glue everything here tonight because it's uh, too big of a mess, and I'll get my hands all dirty, and then I'll get my cameras dirty. But basically, just put your your pieces together. Make sure these are are lined up even, and that will be the drinker for one cage. And then, obviously, once it's installed in the cage, you can go ahead and install your cups or install your your nipples, whatever you decide to use. So let me get this stuff out of the way, so I don't knock anything over. This I'll need. The glue can go. And this can go. Okay, what we're, what we're going to do, and also um, Home Depot has these lids for these buckets. They're really nice. They're, they're pretty cheap, but they'll they'll keep anything from getting in your bucket, um, you know, and, and kind of keep everything clean. So, or keep your water clean, so you're not getting anything in your in your feed line. <clears throat> okay, so to drill the bucket to install this piece, what we're going to do is I have a uh, I think it's a half inch or three quarter, no, maybe it's one inch uh, hole saw. But if you look, that is just about the same size as it just goes over the thread. Um, if somebody would comment, let, uh, let me know if you guys can hear me um, and see me again. I don't know what's going on here. Over on my... Uh, iPad, I'm not saying nothing. Okay, looks like looks like we might be good now. Okay, uh, we lost quite a few people here. Um, so we will go ahead and resume here in a second. I hope you guys had a chance to get uh, take a break and go get something to drink or whatever. Um, I do apologize. I don't, I don't know what is going on. It seems like every time I do something out in the shop, the internet drops and I'm not sure exactly why. Um, I've got a good, I've got a hardwired connection out here. Uh, okay, good. Everybody's saying we're back. Uh, we lost quite a few people that had checked in. Um, but we're going to go ahead and continue, and hopefully uh, we won't run into any more issues. Um, I did see somebody said uh, USA Internet is garbage. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, it, it's hard to say what it was. Okay, so back to uh, installing this uh, little fitting here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole up uh, from the bottom of the bucket. We, like I said earlier, we don't want it all the way down at the bottom because uh, we don't want dirt and stuff to filter into our, our fitting there. So keep it an inch or so above the bucket. I'm going to go back to this other camera for a minute. Again, guys, sorry about the, the mix-up. That's the problem when you uh, try to go live is, you know, you usually run into some kind of problem. So uh, let's see. Okay, we got a few more people checked back in. That's good. Uh, for those of you who just checked back in, we had an issue with our Internet connection. I don't know why it shut down. I went and I checked the router. It was still uh, connected and doing fine. So... Anyhow, let's get back at it. Um, what we did was we drilled a hole uh, in the bottom of the bucket to our, install our fittings in. I'm going to bring you guys in on a close-up camera again. Uh, what, what I'm going to do, uh, these are just regular um, garden hose washers. And what I do is I take one of the round ones and I, I stick it over top of that. And sometimes I'll put one on the inside, but you really don't need to. But what I'll do is I'll take this piece, stick it in here, and then I don't know if I can turn it sideways and show you guys or not. Okay, so basically that's what you've got. And when we build the, uh, the rest of it um, with our 90 It'll come out like that and then go down the back side of the cage. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this stuff out of the way, pull this cage out. 
so you guys can uh, see exactly what I'm doing. This will actually be for the other cage over there. Okay, let me get this cage out of here. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that pipe there or not. What I might do is bring this other camera over. Kind of bring it in a little bit closer. Hold on one second, guys. <clears throat> okay, now I, I think you guys should be able to see that, no problem. Okay, so basically what we got up here at the top is our five gallon bucket and coming out of the fitting, which is right there, uh, the pipe comes over, we're using our 90 to bring it down and then we install, let me get on the side, then we install that uh, the coupling right here. And the reason for that is you want to be able to, to remove your bucket, you know, leave the, the entire water line system here. Um, and then, you know, rinse or wash your bucket out. You can also flush out your entire system here. Um, so we'll leave that like that. I'm going to take the piece that we put together over here. Uh, this is the piece that we assembled earlier uh, for those of you who were with us earlier. And basically what you're going to do is stick it through the uh, inside of the cage and into your T-fitting back here on the back. Like I say, I'm not going to glue everything right now. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll take a, a zip tie. Where are we at here? I'll take a zip tie and wrap it around here uh, and wire it to the side of the cage. Now the reason I ran these this way on the cage, front to back, is one, so I have very easy access to it from the door. And this entire cage is wide open, so I don't need to run it along the back. Um, some of the cages that have a divider, some of the cages that have dividers down the center, I run it across the back. That way I can uh, supply, you know, water nipples to both, both cages. Um, but this one, uh, I just wanted to run it run front to back. A lot easier for me to get in there, clean out the cups and, and whatnot. Um, what else did I want to show you? Let me drop this down a little bit. Okay, if you look down here on the bottom, I, I want to show you uh, this whole th pipe. This is real simple. I mean, you've got the T-fitting, which you know comes down this way and goes into each one of your cages. Now, on the back of this cage, I did have to uh, cut out an opening uh, because I have half inch by one inch wire, so I had to cut out a little bit of the wire just to fit the pipes in. But also, I installed a uh, shutoff valve down on the bottom. And the reason for that is if you ever need to drain your bucket, you can just open that up, drain all the water out, and then uh, shut it off. And what I did do on some of my other cages was I installed shutoff valves um, here and up here. And yeah, two more up here. That way I could shut off the water to each individual cage. Like say I wanted to work on the bottom cage, I could shut, shut the water off here. Uh, drain the rest of the system out and I could work on that water system or if I had one I wanted to work on the two bottom cages I could just shut the one off here so that is you know basically it as far as setting it up and uh, then you'll want to come in with your your fittings and I don't oh you're not gonna be able to see it because I moved the camera uh, let me go back to the other camera there we go uh, then you want to take your your water cups or your horizontal nipples and you know just screw them in if you wanted to go with the vertical nipples um, I would recommend raising this up a little bit higher so the birds actually have to you know kind of stand up uh, to peck at it and then obviously you would have to turn it so the uh, fittings are pointed downward so um, will it crack if it freezes or does the water just push up into the bucket if it, yeah, when it expands, it, uh, it would push back up through the line into the bucket. So it shouldn't freeze. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you guys, and I know, I know I said this earlier before we got disconnected. If you take this regular uh, toilet valve, you can drill a hole in the bottom of the bucket. I don't know, you're not seeing it. You get my other bucket. 
you can drill a hole in the bottom of the bucket, mount this inside your bucket, and then uh, feed a water supply source to the bottom of, of this uh, toilet valve, and you would have a, a truly automatic watering system. And I think, I think I may do that out in my aviary. Um, right now, I'm just using a one gallon waterer. And I hope my audio is still good. Um, Terry, I need some of your hatching eggs. Um, I'm still using my one gallon water out there. I did have a five gallon water system set up out there with the vertical nipples, but they leaked a lot. And I had one, you know, front half of the aviary was getting uh, pretty uh, saturated with water. So I think that's kind of about it. I mean, it's, it's very simple, guys. You know, it's, it's uh, with the exception of maybe this uh, compression fitting. And the nice thing about the compression fitting, too, is it gives you a lot of um, play, you know, to play with, with your uh, lengths of these PVC pieces. But uh, no, that's pretty much it. So uh, if you have any questions on what we, what we just did, um, you know, go ahead and post them now and we'll go ahead and, and take some questions real quick. I'm trying to see what time it is. Uh, eight o'clock. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump into the chat room. And I don't know how long of a break we actually had from, from, uh, from our little mishap here. Um, let me see how many people did we lose? Well, we're back up to 75 people in here, so that's not too bad. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and jump in the chat room and start uh, reading some of your comments and questions. I don't know why we're having these problems out here in the shop, guys. I mean, it's obviously the router shut down on me, uh, or it didn't shut down, but it, it just lost the connection. Even though I am hardwired to it right now, it shouldn't have. Um, uh, Mark's in the house. Welcome, Mark. Glad you can make it tonight. Uh, but anyhow, uh, we got we got through it, and let's uh, go ahead and jump right into the questions. Let's see where we're at. We get back up to the top here. I think I lost. I think I lost the question, guys, uh, from before the uh, the mishap. Let me see what the last one is over here. Okay, that one's there. Okay, it looks like only on my on this computer that I lost it. So I'm going to have to read some off of the uh, the iPad, um, and I won't be able to put them on the on the monitor here. Uh, Adirondack, Adirondack Quail and Duck Ranch says hello, everyone. Hello, welcome. Glad you could make it. Uh, Bill C um, says Adirondack Quail and Ducks. What part? Always oh, talking ask, talking to him. Oliver Smith says hello, Terry. What's going on? Total cluster tonight. I don't know why, but uh, that's just the way things happen. Oliver Smith says, oh, I already read that one. Tony says, hi from Toronto. Hello, welcome. Henriette's in the house. Hello, everyone. I uh, hope everyone's having a good night so far. Uh, G. Rod, hello from Arizona. Tiffany Bailey says, hello, also from Arizona. Jeff Martin says, hey, all. Uh, will be a good show. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a good show if we can keep everything working here. Uh, I hate that it dropped out on us because now I'm going to have to go in, download the video, cut out that dropped out section, and put it back together and re-upload it. Uh, let's see. Jeff Martin's in the house. Says, hey, all. We'll, oh, we already read that one. Oh, Marius is in the house from South Africa. Hello, Terry. Welcome. Uh, Hazy Bees Honey says, checking in from Central Missouri. Peg P says, hi, everyone from Northern California. Valerie Cox says, freezing water, always a problem here in Connecticut. Uh, yeah, I, I know a lot of people that say the same thing. Uh, Oliver Smith says, can you play us a song with your guitar? <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Bird Dog Quail Farm says, hello everyone from Nashville, Tennessee. Welcome. Uh, Boggs says, hi from Australia. Wow, that's a good one. Tiffany says, audio check is good. Okay, good. We've got a bunch of audio checks. Drop down here. Uh, got a bunch of people saying starter pack. Uh, yeah, guys, if you want uh, the starter pack, let me bring it up again. Um, if you're interested in uh, being selected for the, uh, the starter pack, um, 
go ahead and comment starter pack in the uh, um, chat room and we'll go ahead and put you on the the list for that and if you guys will give me one second I gotta move a fan here it gets real hot in my quail room real fast with all these birds in here and the AC shut off it starts to get hot quick okay I think we're down to where I can start reading off of the computer here. Uh, a lot of people saying starter pack, starter pack. Confused says old oh, starter pack. Uh, A. Jones is in the house, is checking in from the northeast tip of Ohio. Welcome, glad you could make it. Uh, whole bunch of starter pack. Jalopy guy says, yes, I definitely need the starter pack. V says, that's very nice. Yeah, that was, I mean, it was really nice of the guy to contact me and, you know, put something together uh, that he's willing, you know, to give away each week on the show. So, Little Ridge Farms and Houses, good evening, y'all. Uh, Marshall Scott's in the house. Ben there says, I brought... I bought a drill and tap that works with all the drinkers and it's easy and convenient. Yeah, I did too. I actually did a video on it not too long ago. Um, I re-tapped a lot of the hatching time cages to add more um, nipples to each of the individual cages and that's why I bought that. Uh, Simon Clark said, I've lost a stream. Anyone else? I lost it all. Okay, I'm going to skip over all the lost stuff. You know, it's funny. I can have perfect internet connection all week long and never had an issue. And then the minute I go live, or at least live out here in the shop, for some reason it drops out. Ben there says YouTube's not working well today. I don't know if it was a YouTube issue or, or a connection issue on my end. On my end, it showed that we were still connected, but it, uh, it, it was kind of like it was froze. Um, Bird Dog Quail Farm says having problems on Shop Talk again, second time. Need to do a beginner series. Had no problem last week. Well, the beginner series last week was done inside my computer room, uh, and the reason we had a problem last week or the last time on Shop Talk was I got up, I had my foot up on top of my knee, and I went and I moved it, and I hit a bunch of the wires that are connecting my cameras to the computer, and that's what happened there. So really wasn't a problem more than it was my big clumsy feet getting in the way. Autumn says, hey everyone from Knoxville, Tennessee. Ben there says, I think you are the only one from there. I don't know who that is. Simon Clark says, hi Autumn. Uh, it's not buffering, just a little circle. Okay, we're getting back to where we're Confused says Terry, such a wonderful man and an inspiration to so many of us. Hoping it gets fixed soon so he doesn't get too frustrated. Yeah, I mean, I really don't get frustrated. Um, I get annoyed. Oops. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to move this. It won't let me. Um, Jeff Martin says, okay, starter pack, starter pack. S. McGee says, just got here five minutes ago, and now this. Hi, everyone. It looks like we are the only ones on. Yeah, we lost uh, quite a few people dropped out when uh, when we had the, uh, the little glitch there. G-Rod says, this is relaxation and refreshment time. No worries. <laughs> Thank you, G-Rod. Ryan's calling out for pizza. Uh, Bird Dog Quail Farm says, Peg P, did you win the eggs Tuesday? I don't remember what... I think Peg got the uh, um, hatching time gift certificate. I'm not sure. Yep, she did get the gift certificate. S. McKee said, maybe I should make dinner while I'm waiting. Yeah, if it went any longer, um, I was about to call it quits and go make dinner myself. Uh, oh, she's talking to Bird Bar Quilp on. Patricia says, uh, I'm, I am still here. Newbie need the starter pack. Simon Clark said, just have to be patient. Terry will sort it. He's built many of our quail pens. 
Pô. Hey, P says, uh, while we're waiting, if you haven't yet, press the like button. And here we are. Jeff says, intermission is over. Okay, so we we got back to the, uh, the live stream. All right, Tiffany's in the house, says he's back. Steve Day's in the house, that sounds good. Um, Autumn says, I can hear you. Tim's in the house. Welcome, Tim, from Michigan. Woo! Okay. Jason Dyer's in the house. Says you're back. Valerie Cox is in the house. Welcome, Valerie. Glad you can make it tonight. Uh, Richie says, I see, see and hear you. Great. Underhill says, USA Internet is garbage. Trash Monopoly is what is going on. Yeah, Comcast has some issues. Right? Rainwater, uh, the rain harvester says, I can't decide quarter inch floors or half inch quarter uh, necessary for mice. The only problem you're going to run into running quarter inch is one, it's very small, so manure is not going to drop through. And also, it's really hard on their feet because it's such a thin wire. Um, I would go, I would go with half inch and, uh, you know, get rid of the, the mice some other way if you can. JL Murphy's in the house, not a newbie, but uh, need the starter pack, starting over. David Pennington says five by five, good. V says, I've been researching quail a lot. I'm so excited to embark on this journey. Uh, question while we wait, what type of house do you recommend? Aviary, chicken coop, rabbit cage, or other recommendations? Um, when, when people ask me what kind of cages and stuff, I always ask them, you know, what their plans are, are as far as you know, where they're going to be keeping the birds. Are they going to be inside like mine are? Are they going to be outside? Uh, would you rather have them in a natural looking set of, you know, uh, setting like an aviary? Um, and to me, it's really, it's really perf personal preference and what you're, you're going to be working on as far as your quail go. I'm working on breeding projects now, so I need a lot of cages um, that don't have to be real big. Um, so I can separate, you know, my, my different breeding groups. V says, yeah, you're back. Get your popcorn. Kevin's in the house. Uh, do your drill in reverse and it stops the birds. Okay. Good point there. <laughs> Steve Day, next shop talk. DIY internet towers. Yeah, I agree. Now, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was, I think our, our internet just glitched. Um, it definitely dropped out because it showed me right here on the computer that there was no connection. Bird Dog Quail Farm says, I got mine from a friend that works with me at CSX Railroad. Found five four tier hatching time cages on eBay for $1,500, shipping included. Wow. I don't know how much uh, five four tiers would be if you got them right off the website. But. Rain Harvester says, will it crack if it freezes, or does the water just push up into the bucket when expanding? I would imagine it was just going to push up into the bucket. I don't know. I'm in Florida, so things don't freeze much down here. But uh, I think you would be fine. As long as the water can expand and go somewhere, um, you should be good. Oliver Smith says, Terry, I need some of your hatching eggs. Okay. Uh, I'm not shipping right now. I did. Uh, I got an order, or I got a shipment going out Monday for last week's winter. Um, but other than that, I'm not shipping. I did talk with Michael from Southwest Game Birds, and he is going to, if I don't have a, uh, uh, a breeder set up before the live stream, he said, you just go ahead and use him and uh, let him know, you know who won. So we should always have, you know, hatching eggs available. The Bird Dog Quail Farm says, oh, this is to the rain harvester. Check on YouTube for Lauren's heater system. Uh, that she uses there in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah, it's in the live streams. Um, Lauren came on and uh, did a live about how to uh, put together that. It's a heated and circulated uh, water system. Oh, and then he says, I don't have electricity at the quail site. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Rochelle Farms in the house. Good evening. Glad you can make it, Mark. Tuning in late. Well, you didn't miss much, Mark. I mean, we. Uh, had a major glitch. Internet went down for probably five minutes or so, but we got it working again. Karen says, I set my first batch of quail eggs. Excited. 
Uh, Kevin says audio is fine. Kevin says if you're in an area that, that freezes hard, the PVC will crack. Oh, okay. He says wondering how the poly tubing, tubing for lawn sprinklers would work. I think I've seen a guy somewhere on the internet, uh, he actually used that stuff to build his uh, watering system. <laughs> Oliver says, Terry, you need to call me to the Geek Squad uh, to wire your internet. I, I'm hardwired everywhere. I mean, I, the router is just on the other side of the wall behind me. I've got a hard wire coming from the router to here. I've got all brand new wire from the pole outside to the you know the service line coming off the pole to the house is all brand new so i think it was just this, i mean i don't have internet dropout issues very seldom so it just happened to be why uh while i'm live so maybe comcast knows i'm going live underhill says uh do peck waters work for quail um well i mean some of these uh ho like the horizontal nipples and the vertical nipples they have to be pecked uh, to get water out. Uh, same with the uh, the horizontal, or not the horizontal cups, but the little drinker cups. They've got a peck at that little plunger there to get water into the cup. Um, Rain Harvester says, is quarter mesh flooring necessary for mice and snakes if outside, or is half inch mesh good? I'm in Central Texas. Um, you'll be fine. I mean, half inch, I think, will be just fine. My, my entire aviary is made out of half inch. I, we've got snakes all over here in Florida. I don't have any issues. Um, we don't uh, we don't have an issue with mice, uh, but I don't think you know. I mean, if they get in, the only thing really that they're going to do is probably get into your feed. I don't think they're going to hurt your birds any. Uh, Marius says hello, Terry. We also lost internet, but looks like we are back online. See, I'm not the only one that has problems. Farmer Brad says, I added a heater and pump to a five gallon bucket and the water circulates through the water bar. There you go, good idea. Uh, Mark says, I, caught, I just caught a quick glimpse of the beginning. I purchased my quail egg labels from Northwest. They were easy to work with. Great, that's good to hear, Mark, because uh, um, they actually contacted me a couple weeks ago and I didn't mention anything because I wanted to check them out first. I've never dealt with them. But I did go to their, their eBay store, and it looks like a lot of people order from them, and they've got like a 99% um, you know, positive uh, rating. So. Uh, Fasalu says, uh, sir, please explain fermentation feed. Uh, basically, fermenting feed. Um, actually, I did a video on it. It would be a lot easier for you to watch that video than have me try to explain it. Um, it's over on our on this YouTube channel, and I think it's called uh, fermenting, fermenting Feed for Quail or Fermenting Quail Feed. Um, check out that video. That will help you a lot better than me trying to explain it. They're not talking to me. Wow, Sam's in the house from Cambodia. That's cool. Got a bunch of people. Barbara's in the house, the starter pack, please. Travis in the house, the starter pack. Not sure if it deleted from before. Yeah, I don't know if it deleted or not, but Susan's in the house. I'd love to have the starter pack. Not talking to me. Vasil's in the house, starter pack. Autumn says, question, Terry, if you're giving away some of your hatching eggs, we could definitely use them. Uh, we had a tragedy with a rat getting a bunch of our birds. Yeah, that's that's a shame. Um, unfortunately, uh, right now I'm not really shipping. Um, a lot of my stuff is there. There are projects. You know, I'm cleaning up my lines right now. Um, shoot me an email, uh, Terry at turnixcorner.com, and uh, I'll put you on the list. See what you, what I can do for you. Maybe I can find somebody else that can can ship to you. Uh, Susan says, uh, is snowing and cold here in Jackson, Michigan? I have family up in Grand Rapids, so they're probably getting the same thing. Uh, bird dog, I'll talk to the farm. Good evening. What size tap is for the horizontal? Um, are you talking the, 
the drill tap. Um, hold on one second, I can tell you. I actually used two different taps. Um, the first one I ordered was, or the first one that I purchased, while it worked, the threads were too loose um, and it, it didn't seal. I even put Teflon tape on it and had an issue. Uh, but the one that I've got that's working really well is it's 3 8 by 24. And uh, what size does that say? Oh, it says, it says to use a 2164 inch, 24, 6, 2164 drill bit. I've never heard of that. I use a quarter inch drill bit with this tap and it works just fine. Tension 10 says my quail will be three weeks on Tuesday. Can they go outside? Um, I mean, for me, three week old quail can easily be outside, but like I said, I'm in Florida, warmer weather. It's going to depend on where you're at. You want to make sure that your birds are fully feathered. Uh, it's going to depend on your, your outside cage system. Uh, is the cage, uh, you know, protected from wind and rain and whatnot? Um, if they're going outside like into a garage, they'll probably be, you know, would probably be just fine. Um, I, I would wait, make sure that they're fully feathered. Maybe wait till four weeks, especially if you've got, you know, um, freezing temperatures or, you know, or below freezing temperatures. Mark from the little shell farm would actually be a better one to ask on that because uh, he lives up there in Connecticut where it's freezing cold all the time. Uh, Scott's in the house, says watching from <laughs> Spavina, Spavina? Sp I don't know what that is. Oklahoma starter pack. Okay. Simon Clark says, Terry, I had a disaster yesterday. We've been having some strong winds here in the UK and it blew my shed door open. Something got in and smashed a few of my pens open and I lost a lot of my quail. Ooh, that's a shame. Yeah, I know the, I know the feeling. Um, I know a buddy of mine had a dog do the same thing to his uh, outside birds, knock cages over chewed the wire off and got to the quail and chewed up a whole bunch of them so uh sam says sam from Cam cambodia i've been following your channel for some time very interesting i'm glad you're enjoying it sam uh, attention 10 if they are feathered out it's safe for them to move outside there you go kevin says yeah i think the problem was youtube and not you yeah it's possible i didn't even think of that because like i say i checked uh I checked my router. It still showed that I had a connection. Well, no, I tried to go on to Facebook. So my connection did drop because I tried to pull up the Facebook page uh, to come back to YouTube uh, to leave you guys a comment, let you know that you know I was working on it and I couldn't even pull up uh, Facebook. Karen says, what's the starter pack? Uh, Karen, that is a, a donation that a guy made. Um, it's a 25, 12 cell, uh, egg cartons and 25 personalized labels so you get your name printed right on the labels and also um, five of the uh, egg scissors uh, you know just to help you out if you're you know giving eggs away or selling eggs uh, kind of dress your stuff up a little bit Kevin's in the house says hey where's Kiki Kiki's not in the house today I don't know if Kiki comes on these uh, Friday night streams Maria says, we are on day seven in the incubator, 132 of my own birds. Congratulations. I almost gave up the whole quail business, but going to give it another try. Marius, you better not give it up, buddy. I mean, if you can make it through summers there in Africa, you're going to do fine. Uh, Attention 10 says, when are they typically feathered out? Um, for me, three weeks is feathered out. You know, they might have some, you know, spots on the head that aren't quite feathered out. But definitely by four weeks, they'll be fully feathered. Jody says hello from Colorado. Love your channel. Thank you. Glad you could join us tonight, Jody. Uh, bird dog is talking to Mark. S. McKee says uh, put two quail rolled in tomorrow flour in the air fryer. Dinner it is. Ooh, that sounds good. I got to try it. Everybody's been telling me to try quail in the in the air fryer. I never have, um, and I, but I love cooking stuff in the air fryer, so 
Yeah, that's the next thing. Terry, why is the question not changing on the scene? What question would that be, Mark? Um, oh, I see what you're saying. Let me get out of... How about that, Mark? I think I just... Uh, let me try it again. Wow. Let's see, that's another thing. I need to look over at this. Uh, there it is. I need to look over at the uh, laptop, or not the laptop, but the iPad once in a while to see what's going on live. What I'm seeing here on my computer uh, is actually about 10 seconds uh, prior to what you guys see. And it, it doesn't show me what's actually being uh, broadcast. Another night played with issues. I apologize, guys. Just one of them days. Maybe Fridays is a bad deal, you know. It might be Fridays. Uh, Jeff said, got a 70 cent hatch rate from Southwest Game Birds. What a great company. Safe shipping, great packaging, good people. Yes, they are. Uh, Michael does an excellent job of packaging, shipping, everything. Mario says, yep, throw away over a thousand eggs about three weeks ago. Can't get buyers for it. Um, stop your girls from laying. I mean, if you... If, I don't know if what your daylight hours over there are right now, but, you know, uh, try to turn off some lighting if you're getting supplemental lighting. Um, you would think that you'd be able to give away eggs. I mean, it, it stinks to have to give them away if you can sell them, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, get a hold of me. Marius, when, when you got time, maybe tomorrow, give me a call or message me on Facebook. Susan says, I'm so happy to be in the drawing for the starter pack. Tension 10 says, okay, my last batch of birds went out at about three and a half weeks. I might do that again. Was wondering if there was a standard. Um, no, I mean, people say that, you know, I, I take my birds out of the brooder at about 10 days, and they say that's way too early, but, you know, my shop was pretty warm. Um, so, you know, they do fine. The birds, my birds that go outside usually go out right around three weeks uh, if they're being cold and they're going out to the aviary. But. J.L. Murphy says, do you have a problem with mosquitoes in your five-gallon buckets? I do not. I have never had a problem with mosquitoes. Although I do put uh, the lids, I do put these plastic lid on top of the bucket. And, uh, you know, that's mainly just to keep dust and stuff out. But. Not talking to me. V says, I plan to keep quail for eggs. I would like to raise them outside in a natural setting. I priced uh, wire dog fence 6x6 six six, uh, with tarp on top at night. Okay. Um, I don't know what the dog fence 6x6 six six is. 6x6 six six wide? Oh, 6x6 six six wide tarp. Okay. Marilyn says, uh, hi from North Carolina, uh, hey, hello to have, Halo, have time to check in today. I don't know what Halo, maybe it's hello. <laughs> Me too, Susan. Marilyn says, starter pack. Uh, Rochelle Farm says, I use irrigation tubing for my water system. Keeps the light out to reduce algae and algae and fittings are cheap also. Good idea. Anyone know if quail will eat duckweed? I think somebody asked that once before on here and it was commented that they love it and it's high in protein. Um, I've never tried it, so you know, I can't uh, say whether or not. Mario says, question, Terry, when are you and me going to build something together in your workshop? I think that would be a dream come true. Um, whenever you're ready, buddy, just let me know. Rainwater says, is anyone growing food for quail? Buying food seems bad for self-sufficiency. Uh, the only thing that I grow, uh, well, I mean, I've got my regular garden, um, and I will give the, the birds greens, you know, out of the garden. Um, this year I'm going to plant, probably in the next month or two, 
I'm gonna plant a lot of cucumbers. My quail love cucumbers, and uh, you know we eat them in salads and whatnot. So I'm sure the you know I can supplement them that way. But cucumbers, I don't think is really all that uh, nutritious for them, other than being you know high in in water content. But, uh, Travis says what. What ratio of waters to quail do you suggest? I use two in each of my open cages. Um, I use two waters for anywhere between 15 and 18 birds. Um, but I'm sure it would service a lot more than that. You could probably do 30 birds with two waters. Uh, the main reason for two waters, if one gets clogged, I know I've got a backup, you know, that my birds aren't going to go without water. Marilyn says, I want to start growing some food for my quail. What are a couple of good choices? Um, I know a lot of people, well, besides the cucumbers, they'll grow like different types of squashes. Um, I know they love pumpkin. My, ch my birds love pumpkin. Um, yeah, I don't know what else. Well, I hope we just didn't lose connection again. My connection over here isn't showing anything. Let me scroll down a little bit. Uh, if somebody, are we still having problems, guys? I'm not seeing a, I'm not seeing an image on the, the laptop, but I am seeing chat. So if you guys could let me know if, if we lost our connection again. Oh, Jeff says we're good. Okay, cool. All right, cool. I just, that's all I need is another drop out. Tiffany says, what is your watering, watering system in the aviary? Uh, originally, it was basically the same watering system we have here with the vertical nipples. I had a five gallon bucket and a row of, I think, six uh, vertical nipples, but it leaked like crazy. So I pulled that out and now I'm using the, the little one gallon waters that you just fill up, you know, and screw the top on and set it in there. Um, but I am going to use, what did I do with that thing? I am going to set up a five gallon bucket out there with the toilet valve in it. And that way it will automatically, you know, fill the five gallon bucket. And the only thing I need to worry about is going out there, you know, every two or three days and filling up the feed. <clears throat> Jalopy guy said, so Terry, last week you mentioned you thought about conduit pipe. To build a pen tower frame, uh, what was the deciding factor for not using it? Um, originally, I was going to build the same frames that we had here, these wooden frames, but I was going to drill a half inch hole through each side and run the conduit pipe, you know, horizontally through the cage, and the cage would just hang on the conduit. But it actually works better the way I'm doing it now. I just got uh, four bolts in each corner of the cage and basically the cage just hangs on them bolts uh, with some fender washers to kind of hold it down so it's not going to move. Um, I did suggest uh, somebody somebody wanted to hang their wire cages and I said you know you could use that conduit run it through the cage and uh, then you know hang it from each end you know to the ceiling in your room. But yeah no the way I've got it now I'm, I'm happy with it. It's just a matter of if I want to take a cage out for some reason, whatever reason that might be, it's just a matter of undoing four bolts, sliding the cage out, and uh, you know, making any repairs or whatever I need to do. Oliver says, I made 16 of your three stack cages. They work great. Uh, fiberglass, the back where I could pressure wash them on the plywood. Okay, the, the wooden frame cages. Yeah, I used them, you know, for two and a half years and they work really you know really well for me um, but like I said the the wood had a tendency to absorb some of the manure smell and with my birds being inside I really needed to you know come up with a different uh, a different setting so I could eliminate that I think the next show that we do guys is going to be uh, I've got cages that I need to install the manure guards on I think I might do the next shop talk will be that um, next week's shop talk is going to be, it's not really shop talk, it's uh, uh, shop talk uh, quail for beginners, something like that. Um, that will be next week's show, but the following one 
I might do something on the uh, hanging the manure guards on most style cages, these cages and also the hatching time cages. Rain Harvester says, do jumbo quail require any changes to the cages, um, egg rollout gap, cage height, or... No, not really. I mean, I keep standard size and jumbos in basically the same cages. Uh, then says, uh, hi Terry, please say something about quail food from Tractor Supply. Because uh, where I live, we have a hard time finding food for quail. Thank you. Um, I buy all my uh, game bird starter I get at Tractor Supply now. You know, I mean, I have other other options. I could go down the road and get it, you know, from a, a regular privately owned feed store. But Tractor Supply is, you know, about four minutes up the road from me, five minutes up the road. Um, the only thing I don't like about them is they only sell the 40 pound bags of the uh, game bird starter. I wish I could get. I wish they would carry the, the 50 pound bag, um, but you know, that's all right. I mean, I just buy enough uh, to feed my, my chicks and my grow outs, so they do fine on that. Um, also, you could use, uh, they have a 16% layer formula up there. I don't know the name of, I believe it's not Dervet. Uh, oh, it starts, I think it starts with a D. Do, do more? I think it's do more um, is, is the, the brand they use. But after talking with a few of the suppliers over at uh, Tractor Supply, they said that do more is actually made by Perina and labeled for Tractor Supply. So. Uh, Tiffany says, uh, what breeds do you have in the shop? They look beautiful. Uh, well, they're all Caternics, um, but I have Manchurians. I have some um, Pansies. I had some Rue, I have some Jumbos, I have Sparklies, um, I got a lot of stuff over in the uh, brooder on the other side of this wall. I think, I don't know, maybe 80 some odd chicks that just hatched out yesterday uh, and they're some stuff that I'm working on, they're, they're really nice. Um, Rain Harvester said, I grow oat and it reseeds chicken eat the leaves and seeds. I'll try quail soon. There you go. I've never tried oats on... Uh, on that. Uh, Peg P says, Terry, how often do you have to flush the water system? Um, I usually flush the water system when I take the cages out to pressure wash the cages, which is about every three months. Um, just because, I mean, I, like I said, I'm inside and I like to keep the smell down in here. Uh, but I haven't had really a whole lot of manure build up on these wire cages. It's got the half inch by one inch uh, coated flooring in it. And you know the manure if it does stick once it dries out and the, and the birds step on it it pushes it right through the wire so um but yeah i would say I, i've never really had to uh flush the system because of stuff getting in into the buckets you know i, I keep lids on all the buckets um and i've never had you know one of the nipples get clogged up or anything so um yeah but when i take everything outside to pressure wash then i do flush the entire um water system. Uh, Rain Harvester says, how many water nipples and feed holes should be in a cage for 24 quail? Um, the water nipples you can get by with two. Um, three or four would, you know, make it a little bit easier on the birds to access them. But, you know, they're not all drinking at the same time. So two would be fine for that. Uh, feed holes. Um, I've had 24 quail using one uh, 11 and a half inch J feeder. And that works fine. Uh, if you're talking about the holes for the little plastic tubs, um, that's not one of them. Um, I put uh, three holes on each side and one on each end. Uh, but if you had 24 quail in a cage, you might want to put two of those plastic feeders in there. Mark says, I just messaged Kiki to see if she's around. Okay. Tiffany says, what's your best quail egg recipe? I've got my parents coming over Sunday and need to pretend <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Um, as, as far as the way that I eat quail eggs, I usually scramble them and make omelets out of them. Um, but I also, like for lunches and stuff, <clears throat>
Wow, guys, this is ridiculous. All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> Mark, you crack me up. I hate popcorn, by the way. All right, guys. Um, we do have a major internet issue going on here. It's not just me. Um, our Comcast line is uh, is dropping. So before uh, we go ahead and lose you guys again, um, I am going to uh, announce uh, somebody to get. All right. Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? Hold on again, guys. I think we're going to have to uh, come up with a better solution. I, I can't believe I'm on Wi-Fi now. Um, I, I disconnected the hardwire. Um, let me see here. Yeah. Crazy, 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 crazy. Um, you can see you, you're good. Uh, Patricia Eason, Patricia, if you're still in the house, uh, shoot me an email with, uh, your shipping information, uh, the name that you want on the labels. Um, we're going to go ahead and give you the starter pack, that thing right there. And uh, I just wanted to make the announcement, guys, real quick before I lose uh, internet again. Um, this is getting ridiculous. I think for now, until I get this internet deal straightened out here in the shop, I am going to continue all the future live streams will be from inside in the uh, computer room. I've, I've got to figure out what's going on. Uh, <laughs> Oliver says, Terry, your internet is like a dog barks. Rough. Yeah, they are. Uh, Kevin says, checking in from Rustin. Question, how many people have a circulating system in cold weather? That I can't answer. Uh, McGee says, you're stuck in place again. I like this one. Mark, you stuck with your mouth open. <laughs> uh, I'm glad we can't hear Terry because you know he's not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, okay. All right, guys. We. I'm going to go ahead and pull the plug on it tonight before we end up losing uh, our connection again. Uh, it's 8.48, so we've been live over an hour now. Um, I'm just running through some of these questions to see if there are some of these uh, chat posts to see if there's any more questions. Underhill says, can you feed popcorn to quail? I don't know. I don't think I would try it. Kevin says, thanks, Terry. Have a good night, all. Okay, let's, La Sierra Acre says, just exit the video and re-enter. What I had to do was actually disconnect... Um, from my hardwire, go back into Wi-Fi, and then reopen the the uh, the program that I stream with. Uh, yeah, Mario says, guys and girls, you can go see my setup also on YouTube, Bullion Quail Farming. Yep, check him out. Subscribe to his channel, helps him out. <clears throat> La Sierra Acre says, you're good on my end. It's now 3.45 in the morning there. Wow. Okay. Looks like we're getting down to the bottom. People are starting to check out. So, guys, um, again, I am going to rethink this whole going live from the shop deal. It seems to be an issue out here. I don't know what it is uh, until we can figure it out. Um, but join us uh, Tuesday uh, for Caternix Corner Live. Um, I don't know yet if I have a guest coming on or not. I will let you know over on Facebook before uh, Tuesday gets here. Um, and then join us next week, Friday. Uh, we'll be doing our uh, Quail for Beginners series again. And that's going to be, we're going to be talking about uh, actually incubating and hatching the eggs. So 
Um, yeah. Again, guys, I want to apologize for all the issues we've had tonight. Uh, it's crazy when you, when you try to do something live, it seems like that's when you have uh, most of the issues. So, uh, Patricia, uh, if you're still in here, don't forget to send me your information and the name that you want on those labels, and I will forward that uh, to our guy for the labels. Uh, everyone else, have a great night, and we will see you all on Tuesday. Have a good night, guys.